Question. List questions to discern how spiritual Doug is. Chad GPT-1. Do you believe in a higher power or universal force that guides the universe, and if so, how does that belief impact your life? Yeah, well, that's the big one, isn't it? Do I believe that? I, I, I'm probably closer to no than yes. Do I want to believe that? I'm closer to yes than no. Do I engage with that possibility? Yes, I do. Sort of say prayers, acknowledgements out loud at certain points in my life. I think, yes, it does impact how I how I lead my life in some ways in as much as I recognise that I have a higher a higher self and a lower self and when I go to work I actively call on my higher self and I do ask for support from whoever's not who, I don't even think it's a whoever. It's so difficult to language it without it sounding ridiculous because I don't think it's a person. Um, any concept of an omnipresent, all-knowing, all-powerful entity consciousness is, is so far beyond anything I can imagine that I get it why religions exist. And I think they're very comforting in a lot of ways, very useful. In a lot of ways, I'd, I'm not part of any of those or any system or way of thinking but i do kind of think there's something in all of them so that's a medium answer to a deep question two how do you find meaning and purpose in your life and what role if any does spirituality play in that process <laughs> Well, I like to feel useful and I think having a purpose is helpful in being useful and feeling useful and having a purpose is something that I feel is an elevated state. Um, it's getting beyond every man, every person for themselves and not just being part of a community or doing something for others. It's... There's something about recognising that we're all connected. I think that that's fundamental to where I come from and it does make a difference and inspire me in ways that I wouldn't be like that if I didn't think like that. Three, have you ever had a profound spiritual experience? And if so, how did it affect your beliefs and worldview? I mean, I've done a lot of things. My weirdometer has been extended in multiple directions. I definitely have had profound experiences. And some of the most profound experiences have felt very ordinary with a wet stick in a field, feeling a bit silly. So I get it that profound experiences don't have to be the hyper intelligent pan dimensional beings come to say hello or having my spirit sung through me via ayahuasca by a peruvian shaman or whatever digging a grave and then spending the night in it doing a death ceremony yeah i mean i'm gonna have to listen to that question again to see if i can actually answer it in any way how did it affect my beliefs and worldview? I think, if anything, it's just added to the general sense that not only are we all connected physically, emotionally, psychologically, energetically, but that we are connected to something beyond just us human beings rattling around on this planet. And I don't really know what that is. I don't really expect to know what that is or understand it in any way. One of the teachings that I had is that there's the known, the unknown, and the unknowable. And the 
known is a very small percentage of what's going on. The unknown can be delved into with a lot of work, but the vast majority is the unknown, which we're never going to know. And I think I'm more, more and more all right about just recognising that I don't, I don't know. Four. Do you participate in any spiritual practices or rituals, such as meditation, prayer, or attending religious services? If so, how do these practices enhance your life? Yeah, well, I've done all of those. I don't know how they've affected my life. I've met some nice people, listened to a lot of words, experimented with a lot of things. I have a tendency towards openness, and I've worked with that, so would I be a different person if I hadn't done any of those things? Probably. We never know how, you know, I don't know how it's possible to track that. I don't think I'm a worse person for doing any of that, that's for sure. Whether I'm better or not, maybe that's for somebody else to say. Five. How do you reconcile any conflicts between your spiritual beliefs and scientific or rational thinking? Well, I don't really ha I don't really put a lot of store in scientific or rational thinking, so I'm sure that will annoy anybody who's a scientific or rational thinker because from that perspective there is the truth and then there is the unknown and then there is something that isn't true. If it's repeatable, what is it? If you can repeat it and it's consistent, then that's a thing, right? I suppose that's what a fact is. Um, I could apply that methodology to some things that I've done that felt very esoteric. I, I, it really feels to me like it's not about making science and rational thinking wrong because that's really got a very, very useful place in our world, especially around medicine and all kinds of things. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't think it's the only thing going on. So I've I've studied religious studies. I've gone down shamanic paths and delved into all sorts of things. I mean... We just try to do our best to muddle through and be vaguely useful and helpful and feel connected and alive, aren't we? That's, that's about it, really. Six. How do you think spirituality can help individuals navigate difficult times or challenges in their lives? Well, I think it's very easy to be cynical, isn't it, about religion and just just have to recognise that it helps a lot of people. And even if believing in something more than us or life after death is completely made up, if it makes people in this life feel comforted and if they're a better person for it, then yay. I guess we'll find out on the other side. 7. How do you approach questions about the nature of existence and the purpose of human life, and what role, if any, does spirituality play in your answers? I mean, the nature of existence, but that infers something beyond the logical, rational, scientific perspective, doesn't it? I mean, you can be logical, ration, rational, scientific and philosophical, and I think that could be a useful combo to kind of go, what is the point of life? Well, do something useful, make yourself useful, do something helpful for the planet or do something helpful for your family or your friends and then they can do something useful for the planet. I mean, if everybody's a bit of a giver and a bit less of a taker, that would seem like a good way forward. Stop bloody killing each other. Eight, how do you see your spirituality intersecting with your personal relationships, career and other areas of your life? Um, I just know a lot of people who are into all sorts of things, who think in all sorts of ways, and I like to go down the rabbit hole with things that I wouldn't have ever thought otherwise or heard otherwise. I think my world is bigger for that. 
So the more interesting, diverse people I know, the better. How do you see your spirituality intersecting with your personal relationships, career, and other areas of your life? I mean, I wouldn't say it's intersected with my career so far. I have thought about being a celebrant. That would be a definite example of it, wouldn't it? I've employed a lot of things from a lot of things in my teaching. I mean, I consciously consider ritual. I consciously consider what can be done to elevate the individual and collective levels of awareness, consciousness and engagement. So I guess that's the thing. Nine. How do you think spirituality can contribute to the greater good of society? And what role can spiritual individuals play in promoting social justice and equality? I don't know. Dalai Lama, Pope. Eckhart Tolle. Whoever, you know, any, any great spiritual leader from any culture, society, if they could all come to the table and uh, make some basic agreements about how we could conduct our lives, whatever you believe in, without making each other wrong, that would seem like a very significant contribution. 10. Finally, what advice would you give to someone who is seeking to deepen their spiritual beliefs or practices based on your own experiences? I haven't got any advice for anybody else. Follow your passions, follow your interests. Look after yourself and those you care about. Oh, 